हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा जयो राधा वल्लभ राधा वल्लभ श्री राधे जयो कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम जयो कृष्ण बलराम जयो वृंदवन धाम वृंदवन धाम वृंदवन धाम जयो वृंदवन धाम जयो राधे श्याम राधे श्याम ललिता विशाखा दे राधे श्याम ललिता विशाखा दे राधे जयो गौरानिताय 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 जयो गौरानिताय प्रभुपाद 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 शिला प्रभुपाद जयो जयो प्रभुपा 
ताय गौर प्रेमानंदे जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्रज काचार्य अश्वोत्तर शतर श्री श्रीमद हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिला प्रभुपाद की जाए अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाए ग्रंथ राज श्रीमद भागवतम की जाए निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री श्री गुरु एंड गौरांगा All blo- glories to His divine grace, Śrīla Prabhupāda, Śrīla Prabhupāda ki jāya. Nama Om Vishnu Pādāya Krishna Prishthāya Bhūtale, Śrīmate Bhakti Vedānta Swāmini Tināmini, Namaste Sāraswate Deve Gauravāni Pracharini, Nirvishesha Shunyavādi Pāschātya Deshatārini. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधीर ये नष्ट प्रायशु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवय भगवतीम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम Hare Krishna welcome all of you for today's discussion of Shrimad Bhagavatam we are reading from canto 7 chapter 15 titled as instructions for civilized human beings and we are reading from verse number 29 thank you prabhu yatha varta dayo yartha yogas yartham na bibhrati अनर्थाय भवेयुस्म पूर्त इष्ट तथा सत यथावादर्थ योग न बिभ्रति अनर्थाय भवेयुस्म पूर्त इष्ट तथा सत यथावादर्थ न बिभ्रति अनर्थाय भवेयुस्म पूर्त इष्ट तथा सत योगस्यार्थं 
ಯೋಗಸ್ಯಾಬ್ರತಿ ಅನರ್ಥಾ ಭೇಯುಸ್ಮ ಪೂರ್ತಂ ತತ ಯೋಗಸ್ಯಾಬ್ರತಿ ಅನರ್ಥಾ ಭೇಯುಸ್ಮ ಯೋಗಸ್ಯಾಬ್ಯತಿ ಅನರ್ಥಾ ಭೇಯುಸ್ಮ ಪೂರ್ತಂಸ್ಯಾಬ್ರತಿ ಅನರ್ಥಾ ಭೇಯುಸ್ಮ ಪೂರ್ತಂ ತಿಬ್ರತಿ ಯಸ್ ವಾರ್ತಾ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೇಷನಲ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಷನಲ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ he certainly arthaha income from such occupational duties yogasya of mystic power for self realization artham benefit na not bibhrati help anarthaya without value binding one to repeated birth and death bhaveyu they are sma at all times purtam ishtam ritualistic vedic ceremonies tatha similarly asatah of a materialistic non devotee Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Translation As professional activities or business profits cannot help one in spiritual advancement but are a source of material entanglement the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies cannot help anyone who is not a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Purport If one becomes very rich through his professional activities through trade or through agriculture this does not mean that he is spiritually advanced to be spiritually advanced is different from being materially rich although the purpose of life is to become spiritually rich unfortunate men misguided as they are are always engaged in trying to become materially rich such material engagements however do not help one in the actual fulfillment of a human mission on the contrary material engagements lead one to be attracted to many unnecessary necessities which are accompanied by the risk that one may be born in a degraded condition as confirmed in the bhagavad gita 14.18 urdhvam gacchanti satvastha madhya tishtanti rajasah ಜಘನ್ಯ ಗುಣ ವೃತ್ತಿಸ್ಥ ಅಧೋಗಚ್ಚಂತಿ ತಾಮಸ ದೋಸ್ ಸಿಚುವೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೋಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಜುಲಿ ಗೋ ಅಪ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ ಹೈಯರ್ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೋಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯಾಷನ್ ಲಿವ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಅ
and those in the mode of ignorance go down to the hellish worlds. Especially in this Kali Yuga, material advancement means degradation and attraction to many unwanted necessities that create a low mentality. Therefore, Jaghanya Guna Vrittistha, since people are contaminated by the lower qualities, they will lead their next lives either as animals or in other degraded forms of life. Making a show of religion without Krishna consciousness may make one popular in the estimation of unintelligent men, but factually such a materialistic display of spiritual advancement does not help one at all. It will not prevent one from missing the goal of life. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakhaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahiyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishna Vamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakham Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Yam Pravrajantam, Anupeta, Anupeta Krityam, Anupeta, Mapeta Krityam, Dvaipayana Virahakatara Ajuhava, Putre Titan Mayataya Tarabo Bhinedu, Stam Sarva Bhuta Hridayam Munimanatosmi. Hare Krishna. School holidays, huh? <laughs> nice to see. <clears throat> okay. So, which book are we reading? Which book? Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> okay, I'll be asking a lot of questions in between, so be alert. <laughs> so, we are reading from the 15th uh, chapter of the 7th canto, and it's titled as Instructions for Civilized Human Beings. Who is conversing here? Narad, Narad Muni to Yudhishthir Maharaj. And who is asking these questions? Who is hearing actually? And then, in which discussion is this? Is it not relevant to Prahlad Maharaj? Yeah. So, and then, of course, Shukadeva Goswami explaining it to Parikshit Maharaj. Now, this chapter, if you if you have followed the chapters that have come in the sequence, initially it spoke about the Varnas, the four Varnas, and then the four Ashramas, and then ideal family life, and then instructions to the civilized human beings. 
It's a very interesting way the title has been given. I'm not sure if it's Srila Prabhupada who gave the title for the chapter or if, if it was BBT, the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, it is called as Instructions for Civilized Human Beings. So once the social caste, the spiritual, uh, the sp social cadre and the spiritual cadre has been discussed, the four ashramas and the four varnas. The four varnas, it is sp spiritual or social? What are the four varnas? Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shud. These are the four social or spiritual classes. These are the social classes. Why are they social? Because, because they are to do with the activities in the society. Brahmana, uh, but uh, he studies scriptures and teaches scriptures. Vaishya does business, Kshatriya, right? That is a um, social class. And what is the four spiritual classes? Sanyasi. Full marks to Savior. What is happening to you guys? So, what is the spiritual class meaning? What, what, what does spiritual class entail? The classification of consciousness, of how one has to progress their consciousness in their life. Brahmacharya, then Grihastha, Grihastha Ashrama, and then Vanaprastha Ashrama and Sanyasi. It is just not an external manifestation of whether someone is a Grihastha or someone is a Vanaprastha or a Sanyasi. It is the progression of consciousness. And then, after studying, after studying these two chapters, the chapter was ideal family life. Why is family life important? Why does that become very important? Because that ashrama, which is the, which is the spiritual ashrama, is the credible ashrama which supports all other ashramas. Because that is where money earning money is allowed. Hmm? A little bit of leeway is given for grihasthas to allow to earn money and then they support the brahmacharis and the sannyasis. Of course, Vanaprastha is uh, expected to live in the forest which doesn't happen these days. So, that is, that is ideal family life. And then now it is spoke, speaking about, spoken about instructions for civilized human beings. Um, civilized human beings, who are civilized human beings? Who are called civilized? We'll discuss about that in a while. So, before we go into this verse, um, I usually have this habit to glorify Srimad Bhagavatam because it's a literature and glorifying Bhagavatam is also purifying. There's a verse in the 12th canto, the 12th chapter, called as the topics of Srimad Bhagavatam condensed or summarized. There is a verse. Ya etat Shravayen nityam yamak shanam ananyadhihi shlokam ekam tad ardham va padam padardham eva va shraddha dhavan yo nushrunuyat punat puna punati atmanam eva saha. This verse is very interesting because. Ya etat shravayen nityam, one who tries to hear and tries to recite this nityam always. What? This is talking about the glory of Srimad Bhagavatam. Ya etat shravayen nityam, yama kshanam ananya dhihi. Yama means if you, if you hear it or if you chant it every hour or a minute or always. What? Srimad Bhagavatam. If you, if you read it for an hour, or if you read it for a minute, or if you read it for just a few moments, okay? And what, what will you read? Shlokam. What is shlokam? A verse. Ekam. One verse. Tad ardham. What is ardham? Adha. You see? Adha comes from ardham. Tad ardham va. Not even one shloka, but ek adha, adha shloka, tad ardham va, padam padardham va. Padam means one line, Srila Prabhupada's purport ka, ek line, one line, pada ardham va, or even half a line of Srila Prabhupada's purports or a shloka, shraddhavan, with lot of faith, if someone does what? Yo anushrunuyat. Anushrunu, it's not shrunu, it is anushrunu yad, means hearing, following and reading in the footsteps of the Acharyas. Punati, pu means, you know what is pu, pu means mala or dirt, <laughs> it's the same word in English. <laughs> pu nati, nati means which will remove all the dirt and atmanam evasaha, 
will certainly purify the very Atman, very self. This is the glory of Srimad Bhagavatam. Even reading half a verse, um, this is the uh, glory of Bhagavatam. And again, today is what? Today is a special day. Today is Ekadashi. What Ekadashi is it today? Papa Vimochan. Okay, very nice. There's the next verse in the same chapter, 12, 12, 60, it says, Dvadashyam ekadashyam va shrinvan ayushyavan bhavet patati anashan prayataha puto bhavati patakat. I will read Prabhupada's translation on this. One who hears the Srimad Bhagavatam on the Ekadashi or the Dvadashi is assured of long life. Who wants a long life? Like Brahmaji. And one who recites with careful attention while fasting is purified of all sinful reactions. This is the, the blessings that Srimad Bhagavatam gives us. Now we have to understand Srimad Bhagavatam is not just any other religious book. You know, by reading this, you'll become materially successful. By reading this, you'll become healthy. By reading this, you'll become powerful. By reading this, you'll become peaceful. It's not a book like that. Because Bhagavatam already has rejected this in the second verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Dharma projita kaitavatra paramo. It rejects all these false religions. It has nothing to do with this material life in that sense. Because it has nothing to do with life itself. This has nothing to do with life. The life in our conception called life. It has to do with real life called a spiritual life. Because uh, what, is, what is life going to end with? Death. death. So Bhagavatam is not talking of life and death. It is talking of life beyond death. Huh? Therefore Prabhupada says life come from, comes from life. So therefore Bhagavatam is not a mundane literature that we talk about. It is something to do with life beyond death. So therefore it is talking of transcendental or transcendence. So now let us go. Um, my habit is to little bit analyze what we, how we traverse the, each, each verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now let us take, take our first step into this chapter why it has been titled as civilized. How many of you know the, the, class, the literal meaning of civilized in the English dictionary? Yes? Anyone? What do you mind, mean by civilized? Yeah. Following proper rules and regulations. <clears throat> Just 60, 70 years ago, the Britishers considered most of the other countries in the world to be uncivilized. If people were not wearing clothes, they thought they are uncivilized. When they came to India, they thought these are all uncivilized people. They are not even wearing proper clothes. Uh, when they saw people wearing dhoti and chadar, they thought they are almost naked, they are uncivilized. Uncivilized also meant th that this is the English definition and, and, the, and the definition changes over time. When they saw people eating with their hands, they thought they were uncivilized. Because you have to use the knife and the fork. Huh? Is that taught in the schools these days? It's dirty to eat with your hands. Have you heard that? See, these are, these are the definitions of uncivilized. Therefore, to, uh, so the, the, so the, uh, again, uh, civiliza civilization and uncivilization or civilized or uncivilized is always having a cultural connotation to it. Is it not? In the modern context. But Srimad Bhagavatam, when it is talking about instructions to the civilized human beings, it's not talking of the people who are eating with forks and knives. It's talking of something else altogether. It is talking of those human beings who have civilized consciousness, who are aware of their existence. In other words, they are called as Brahmanas. Uh, not the Brahmanas who is doing Gayatri, but the Brahmanas who have come to the level of understanding who they are, that they are the spirit. They are an Amsha of the Supreme, uh, Supreme Lord. Therefore, it is important that they have to be given instructions. This is the instructions to the Brahmanas. Why is it instructing the Brahmanas now? Why is it even instruct? These are instructions for civilized human beings. This is not for everyone in that sense. This is for civilized human beings. Correct. And therefore, because they are topmost, they have an ultimate responsibility for the other people in the society. So therefore, these are the instructions for civilized human beings or for those human beings who want to come to the level of civilized, who want to become civilized, it is the, the instructions are for them. Uh, this verse today, Yatha 
yatha vartadayo hyartaha in hindi uh, usually when we were there in there was only one channel doordarshan <laughs> that was the name of the channel and we used to get 9 o'clock news it was called as varta <laughs> you know varta means news news of what news of everything that happens around you that is called varta varta adaya adi means adi the all of all of the other concerned hya artha the artha of all of this varta yogas yogasyartham na bibhrati anarthaya bhave yusma purtam ishtam tatha satah this verse is talking about whatever varta you do whatever you talk about material realm and propad writes about material progress uh, it is a continuation of the previous verse in the previous verse we read yesterday maharaj was teaching us that the ritualistic ceremonies the vedic practices all of that is just a useless waste of time as long as if they are not taking us closer to krishna otherwise it's all a useless waste of time similarly now here one may do farming one may do so many occupational duties but if they are not concerned with the highest spirit then they are just shrama eva hi kevalam they are just a useless waste of time anything material any progress in material realm is not going to take us anywhere that's what this verse is talking about now does it mean that one should not create wealth does it mean that one should not work does it mean that one should not function in the material society no that is not the purpose of this verse the purpose of this verse is what is the endeavor what is the ultimate endeavor of a human society that is what is concerned in this verse uh, atyahara uh, one is one, one is working very hard for material progress what is material progress what is material progress huh money, money? is it only money affluence fame yeah yes adoration distinction so many things anything that is concerned with matter any progress related to matter is called material progress it could be going to the gym and working out your arms so that you can show off the body that is also material progress because bhagavatam clearly delineates between material progress and spiritual advancement there's a beautiful book prabhupada has written civilization and transcendence how many of you read that it's a small book it's a wonderful book to read actually uh, the, the 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 book name of the book itself is quite amazing civilization and transcendence if you take a stick on one end is civilization on the other end is transcendence they are opposite ends of the same stick if you want transcendence you have to get out of civilization or so called civilization of this material world so therefore it seems to be very opposite trying to materially progress and civilize is different to what is transcendence why we will see we will see here today propad writes in the purport very interesting in the second part of the purport especially in kali yuga material advancement means degradation and uh, degradation and attraction to unwanted necessities that create a low mentality is it not a brahmachari was distributing books in india and he approached uh, a few people and this guy seemed to be very educated so prabhu ji ab- approached him radhesham it was radhesham prabhu anyways i'll tell you who the brahmachari is he approached a, a person on the street and he said hey would you like to take a bhagavad gita um and he said what's in it for me why should i buy it he said it'll make you happy and immediately he looked at radhesham prabhu from top to bottom he said i don't want to be happy like you <laughs> did you read the sentence what he mean what he meant i don't want to be happy like you uh, then prabhu ji was smart you know of course radhesham prabhu is smart he said well you don't have to be a shaved head like me and he showed bhagavad gita's front page and he said look arjuna has lot of hair he is not shaved head and still he was preached bhagavad gita by krishna so you can still ha- have your hair on the on your head and you can still go to work but it will make you happy the way you have to be happy not necessarily the way i am happy so it's for everyone so incidentally he took the book blessed he was because of radhesham prabhu's association but have you noticed that it is very difficult 
to preach Krishna consciousness to those who are very materially engrossed. Yes or no? Do you all agree? If they are too busy materially, it's very difficult to preach Krishna consciousness to them. Is it not? But does it mean those who are poverty stricken, is it easy to tell them Krishna consciousness? So then what's the crux? If somebody is materially very opulent and very busy, you know, every minute is dollars for them. Every minute is dollars. If you want uh, the uh, two minute time of, of Elon Musk, he will calculate one minute I earn a million dollars. Two minutes means two million dollars. So if you pay me two million dollars, I'll give you an interview for two minutes. You see, because it, for them time is money. Is it not? So that means it's very difficult for them because for every minute they'll be thinking, I need to earn, I need to earn, I need to make money, I need to make money, I need to make money. Or I need to progress, I need to progress, I need to do something, you know. But on the other end, if somebody is lethargic and lying around the beach and, you know, uh, power, completely poverty stricken, he's got all the time in the world, but do you think you can tell him Bhagavad Gita? Why? Why? He, he's the, he seems to have all the time in the world. So why we can't preach to even a poverty stricken person and even he is not ready to take Krishna consciousness. So it is not the wealth nor the poverty which is the problem. It is the unending desires in the mind because even the poverty stricken man is also trying to be wealthy in his mind. He doesn't have the means to become wealthy but was so try. How will I make money? How will I make money? How will I be comfortable? Oh, how I wish I had the resort. How I wish I will lie down and then there are 10 servants, you know, doing massaging on my body. He will be thinking in the mind. So he is actually relishing all the material things in his mind. Whereas the other guy is trying to relish it practically. The other guy is trying to relish it mentally. So even he is involved mentally also. He is also trying to materially progress only. So the, it is about the thought process that we have to be careful of. So therefore, um, so the, in the scriptures, it is spoken about four human ends, you know, four, four goals of human existence. What are they? What is the goal that one should live for? Yes, dharma, artha, kama and moksha. There are the four human ends which I talk about. There, are, there is a fifth human end also which Acharya say, which is bhakti. And it is said, the lowest of any human is to always aim for making money. That is artha. Among the four human ends, if somebody is saying, I live to make money, then that is abhorred in the scriptures. It doesn't mean one should not make money. It means one who makes his life's goal is to make money. That is criticized. So therefore, um, if then what do we have to do to talk about, to get out of this material advancement? Then is, it, is it important that we should not make material progress? Is, should, is it important that we should not create wealth for ourselves? Is it that devotee should be poor and then be poverty stricken so that we can become uh, spiritually advanced? What do we understand? How do we understand? And why do those people who are busy don't take to Krishna consciousness? Uh, I was just observing the thought process. Yes, Prabhuji? Huh? For service of Krishna. Earn for service of we have to earn for the service of Krishna. But that's easy to realize after a lot of years of practice. So, if you follow Srila Prabhupada's purport, in the middle of the purport, Prabhupada writes, on the contrary, material engagements lead one to be attracted to unnecessary necessities which are accompanied by the risk that one may be born in a degraded condition. And then Prabhupada quotes 14.18. Prabhupada links Urdhva Gachanti Sattvastha Madhye Tishtanti Tamasaha. Prabhupada quotes the verse from the 14th chapter. What is 14th chapter of Bhagavad Gita? The three modes of material nature. So Prabhupada brings in the three modes of material nature here. How is this verse related to the three modes of material nature? Correct. If you really see, everything in this material world is tainted and controlled and created by these three modes of material nature. Everything. Can you name a few? Can you name a few? What is controlled by three modes of material nature? Our senses and? Mind, actions, yes, huh? Intelligence. intelligence, true. Our thoughts, our deeds, our body, our nature, things around you, people around you, our actions, our desires, everything is created by the three modes of material, material nature. 
everything practically everything our eyes our ears our nose our skin everything is related to three modes of material nature because it, the whole creation the shrishti starts because of the three modes of material nature so this material creation itself is a product of three modes of material nature so therefore if you see then this verse becomes very relevant why is prabhupada talking of the three modes of material nature how is it related to this verse that is how we have to understand now everything around us is made of three modes of material nature 15th chapter second verse uh, krishna says adhas chordvam prashatas tasya shakha guna pravriddha vishaya pravalaha adhas chamulani anusantatani karmanubandhine manushya loke the three modes of material nature nourish everything as the tree is nourished as the twigs and the leaves are nourished everything is nourished by the three modes of material nature right now we are influenced by the three modes of net material nature are we or are we not probably by the mode of goodness but if somebody is feeling sleepy there is a taint of mode of ignorance also coming in you see because at all times there are three modes acting and trying to dominate on each other one upon each other everything right now so we will take uh, a little bit of time to understand why it is important to study the three modes of material nature there are two aspects we have to understand as a jiva we have to understand two aspects one is nature one is influence one is intrinsic nature and one is influence on us which is called as swabhava and prabhava right every jiva when he is born when we are born right we have an intrinsic nature as a spirit soul is it not jivera swarupa hoy krishna ranitya that is our swarupa right but it's very difficult to understand and come to the realization why because of prabhava because of influence and there are three types of influences on us on every jiva in this creation there are three types of influence that is um, imposed on us and what are they it is the genetic influence which is the body which we have got ha huh? it is the society influence that we have the society around us the genetics around us and what else what other things influences ha huh? the association that is a society that is the external influence so basically it is your the mind the intelligence the society and your genetic makeup there are three things right so this is prabhava and what it does because of this external imposition on us it shrouds our intrinsic nature it it shields the intrinsic nature so therefore krishna says and prabhupad writes it is very important to understand how these three modes work how they are working for us to know who we are are am i a spirit how do i know i am a spirit is it not now the problem but the problem is i we say we, how do you do you all agree we are all spirit souls how many of you agree we are spirit souls but how many of us know we are spirit souls is difficult is it not mahatma prabhu is raising his hand why is it difficult why is it difficult to know who we are although we to realize who we are although we know we are spirits three modes. Three modes. because of the three modes the reason is as long as we are trying to understand who we are using matter we will never understand spirit is it not okay question to all the children in the front can you see the soul using a microscope why okay i'll i'll use a microscope which is 1000x amplification okay 10000x you said it's tiny it's i'm 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 saying 10000 times amplified you still can't the soul see the soul what is the amplification you need for the microscope to see it sorry the thousand to the tip of the hair okay i'll get my hair cut it down into 10000 parts and is it smaller than a virus or a bacteria okay i'll increase the microscope's potency to 100000 times you still can see the soul why who said that and i said that good we cannot because microscope is matter and spirit is antimatter or not matter so therefore you can't see it now let's go one step further can you see it with your mind can you see your soul with your mind why because mind is matter 
Can you see it with your intelligence? Can you see it with your intelligence? You can? You can't? Okay, two parties here. Why you can't see it? Because matter, intelligence is again matter. Is it not? Intelligence, mind, the body, they're all matter. So how do you understand spirit then? How do you understand spirit which is spiritual? To understand spiritual, you need to be spiritual. Or you have to see it through the lens of the spirit. Yes, Prabhuji? Through the spiritual intelligence. But where is it? Where is it available? So Krishna... Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you all for participating so eagerly. Thank you all. I'm glad I'm keeping you awake and interesting because of your school holidays. Krishna tells in the 14th chapter, 6th verse. What is the first verse he gives introduction to mode of goodness? It's important to know the mode of goodness because it's only when we come to the platform of mode of goodness, then something spiritual can be comprehended initially. At least we can begin to comprehend what is spiritual. Tatra sattvam nirmalatvat prakasham anamayam sukha sangena badnati jnana sangena chanagha. Now, a parent is telling his child, your father might tell you or your mother might tell you, Hi Griva, close your eyes and see Krishna inside. Close your eyes and see Krishna inside. What do you see? Good. What do you see when you close your eyes? Darkness. Then what do you talk of searching yourself inside, seeking inner happiness? The moment you close your eyes, it's dark. Is it not? And Krishna he is, he is saying, Tatra sattvam nirmalatvat prakasham anamayam. It's illuminating, Krishna says. Where is it illuminating? The moment I go inside, it's dark. Think about it. Let's say we bought a house. We've applied for the utilities. And the utility company has supplied electricity to us. It's all done. You've supplied the electricity. Everything is done. And daylight saving has changed now. It's getting darker sooner and the days are getting shorter. And you reach the house and you know they've said electricity has been supplied. You reach the house and the house is dark. The house is dark. So what will you do? Ah, 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 ah. There's a challenge. You don't know where the switch is. You don't have a phone, sorry. <laughs> Okay, you, you have a big house. <laughs> you have a big house. It's big. It's a mansion. And you don't know where the switch is. Plus, it's an old house. So therefore, there's a lot of filth inside the house. This is the state of our consciousness. It's dark. It's full of filth. And we don't know where the switch is. At this point, Krishna says, Prakasham prakashakam anamayam. Everybody wants to look for green electricity these days. Is it not? What is green electricity? Solar is green electricity. Why is it green? Because? It's because of the sun. Le oh, very good. Very nice. Interesting. How old are you? You're eight. Good. Why is it less polluted? Good. But think about the production of the solar panels. Where did the solar panel come from? In the first place. So, there is nothing called green electricity. Think about batteries, lithium, pollution of the batteries. So, there is nothing like green electricity. Huh? The electricity that we produce in Australia is always from? Most of the times from? from coal, burning coal. And what does coal produce? Smoke. Smoke, you know, and sooth. There's a lot of sooth and smoke. But here Krishna is saying, it is prakashakam anamayam. The light, the light that is illuminated in your spirit doesn't have coal, is not from coal, it doesn't produce smoke. It is the real green electricity that Krishna is talking about. It is the real illumination. Huh? There is no byproduct from it. Such an illumination is when you come to the mode of goodness. So, and then, what is the symptom of someone who has come to the mode of goodness? Huh? 
They are ha- suk- sukha sangena, jnana ch- sangena. Sukha sangena, gna- they are generally happy and they are always after knowledge or they take pleasure in knowing. Can we relate this to anyone in the material world for us closely? Who take happiness in knowing? Scientists, isn't it? You see the scientists around us, they are very happy. They are very happy in discovering. They want to discover. They can spend years of their life discovering something. For example, in recent um, technology advancement, now scientists are very interested in slimy molds. How many of you have seen, heard the slimy molds? You know what's a slimy mold? A slimy mold is something as like a fungus which grows on the trees and then it grows. Interestingly, a slimy mold doesn't even have a brain. But the recent research they have found, uh, you know you have a maze? You know what a maze is? And you put, um, you put cheese on the other corner of the maze and put a slimy mold. It's a mold. It's just mold. On the other end, the mold works its way out to find the cheese. And the mold doesn't even have a brain. Now scientists are amazed by this. How can something which doesn't have a brain have work out the route and it works out the shortest route in the maze to the cheese? Huh? So Japanese are using the slimy mold to work out called traveling, you know, have you heard of traveling salesman problem? So sometimes when you have, when you order food online, they have to work out the shorter route, shortest route to deliver food to you, Del- deliveroos and all of them. They have to work out the shortest route to make profits of course. So the, it's called as a, in logistics it is called as traveling salesman problem. Hmm? What is the shortest route the salesman should take? So they're using slimy molds to discover the shortest route, you know, your Google Maps tells you. So much so, they are incorporating slimy molds in AI chips nowadays. So, this is interesting, isn't it? Therefore, such scientists are interested in discoveries. Sukha sangena, jnana sangena. They take pleasure and happiness in such discoveries and they are not interested in anything else. You call them for having good uh, dance and music, they are not interested. They will go on discovering. So, they are in mode of goodness in one sense. Is it not? They are in mode of goodness because they are not hankering for so many things. They are happy with their discoveries. But Krishna tells in this verse, Badhnati, such pleasure will still cause bound. It can bind you. It can bind you to that happiness. Huh? But what happens to mode of passion and uh, mode of ignorance? Krishna says they are Nibadnati. Nikrishta badnati means they will bind you even more and they will drag you down. But mode of goodness will bind you, but there is a chance where you can unmound yourself. What's the clue Krishna gives? What's the clue Prabhupada gives in this? The clue that Prabhupada gives is for people who come to mode of goodness, what they have to do is when you come to the mode of goodness, you just have to change the concept that you are discovering matter rather than change that mentality to discover spirit. But how do we discover spirit? As we already said, you can't discover spirit using your mind, using your intelligence. So you have to go back a few verses. The only way to discover spirit is to take the instructions from spiritual master. To get empowered from a spiritual master. Because he is spirit, because he has access to spiritual energy, because he has access to that Shakti called Bhakti Shakti, he invests that Shakti in us and therefore we become illuminized. So he has the switch. So don't search for the switch. Go to the spiritual master. Go to the electrician. He will tell you where the switch is. He will tell, open the door, the switch is on your left hand side or the right hand side and you can switch it on. Otherwise you might spend the whole rest of your life searching for the switch. You might not find it in your mansion. So when you go to your spiritual master, your spiritual master, hey, here's the switch. When it is on, immediately there will be light. Prakashakam anamayam. That illumination in your heart will then gradually destroy the darkness. When you close your eyes, then you will not see darkness. You will see that illumination within ourselves. That is Vasudevam Sarvamitisa Mahatma Sudurlabha. When we close our eyes, we will not see darkness, but we will see Krishna. We will see the spirit. So that is what here Prabhupada culminates to say, Urdhvam gachanti sattvasta madhe tishtanti rajasaha. Such people who try to come to the mode of goodness, because the mode of goodness is the only platform from where you can realize Krishna, from where you can realize spirit. Because mode of passion and mode of... What happens in mode of passion? What happens in mode of passion? Correct. It's too much activity. It's too much activity. Have you seen people disturbed always? Huh? 
They say, when you are disturbed externally, your mind also is disturbed. Have you seen a, a child is always, what is it called as? Fidgeting. Huh? So always fidgeting. What does it mean? Mind be fidget hora. The mind also is fidgeting. Mind is fidgeting. So when you have a, they say, when you keep milk in a vessel, right? And when you shake the vessel, what happens to the milk inside? The milk also shakes. The milk is the mind. Huh? Vasu, it is called as vasu. The body is the vessel. If you keep shaking the body, the mind also shakes. So put that in one place and keep it sthita. Sthita means stable. Keep it stable. That's why you see, when you, when you learn the art of Kung Fu or something, they will ask you to control your hand movements, control, stay. Have you seen the Buddhist monks stay in one place? And they'll be chanting, Om, like that. Because that is the whole point of yoga. Yoga Bhyasa or Yoga Sana, they will teach you breathing techniques. Uh, Maharaj was talking about pranayama yesterday. It takes years to come to the perfection of pranayama. Years. They, 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 they'll, try, they, they'll try to help you to stretch your breathing. If you go to lower animals like um, dogs, you see how the dogs breathe? <laughs> they'll be keep breathing like that. You see? Why? Mode of passion. Monkeys also breathe like that. But you come to animals which live longer. Tortoise, trees, they breathe longer. So much so a tree can breathe once in six months. You know when they hibernate? They don't breathe, I mean they breathe of course, but there are no leaves. So they hibernate, so they can breathe longer. The longer your breath is, the longer your lifespan is, they say. So therefore yoga trains you to long, long, long lifespan. By, but the whole idea of bhakti, the usage of bhakti, uh, yoga in bhakti is to stabilize your mind and consciousness so that we can focus on one thing, on Krishna. So therefore devotees sit in one place and chant most of the times. If they are sleepy, they walk. So um, I'll just summarize. So the whole point here Prabhupada brings out is the more one is advancing, so material advancement is all uh, the arena of mode of passion. They want to discover, they want to realize something and then in the middle they'll think, oh, I've discovered something, so I'll create this necessity. They'll create artificial necessities. Huh? Nowadays, uh, to, uh, you see, everything has a device. To wash the clothes, you have a device. Press of a button, the clothes are washed. Press of a button, the dishes are washed. Press of a button, everything is done. Press of a button, the atta is made. Press of a button, rotis are also coming out. But people still don't have time. <laughs> this is the irony of modern civilization. People don't have time. Where is the time going? So the time is going to all the magnets there. Mark Zagarberg is taking your time. Sundar Pichai is taking your time. So because you are on Facebook, so all your time is going there. So you are actually giving your life to these people, you see. And then the machines will say, don't worry, our machine will do, it, do the washing for you. And then you have to work hard to earn the money to pay for this guy so that he will give you a machine. And yet we don't have time. So this is the arena of mode of passion. Huh? Mode of passion makes us so busy that we don't have time for spirit. And mode of ignorance, it will completely shroud the consciousness where we don't even have the capacity to think who we are, to think what we are doing. That is mode of ignorance. People who are usually intoxicated, they will not have the capacity to even think who they are. So that's why Prabhupada says in Kali Yuga, material advancement means going the opposite side of spirituality. Uh, if you see the Vedic past, material advancement was not rejected, but material advancement was designed in such a way that you progress spiritually as well. This is Varnashrama system. Because you see, India in the 12th century, 37% of the GDP of the whole world was coming from one country, India alone. That is why everybody came there to steal the wealth. Is it not? So they were materially advanced and spiritually advanced. How is that possible? They were spiritually advanced and materially advanced. How the, what was that? Because of the Varnashrama society. But because now the, the Varnashrama system is lost, um, people are majority in mode of passion, the material advancement is actually nations. That's why Prabhupada says nations. Um, and therefore the instructions to the uh, civilized human beings, they come back to Brahmana layer is established first, the Varnashrama system is established and then gradually we can take to the fourth principle. Therefore that is only possible if we come to the level of spirit which is bhakti. Therefore devotional service becomes imperative. If we practice the uh, put, the, put it into practice, devotional service into practice, then naturally all the, you come to mode of goodness and the society is re-established. Uh, therefore, Kunti Devi prays, I'll chant this prayer and then complete here. Namo akinchana vittaya nivritta gunavrittaye atmaramaya shantaya kaivalye pataye namaha. Kaivalye pataye namaha. So for one who is imp uh, impoverished, 
only those people Krishna is attracted to. Impoverished means one who is not materially poverty stricken, but those who don't depend on matter. Because the more we depend on matter, the more our dependency on it increases. You, you getting what I mean? The more we become materially dependent, then wherever you go, we become materially dependent. We can't live without it. Is it not? Um, I remember um, uh, when I was in the UK, I used to go on bike to get my groceries. Now I have a car. So I come to the temple, two kilometers also, I drive, zoom, I park and then I, I come out. And if there is no parking in front of the temple, I, I said, oh, there's no parking, I have to park till Kerford Road, which is miles away from the temple. You know? So this is the mind, you see? Mind will complain, oh, um, uh, Kerford Road is too far from the temple. How many steps it takes from Kerford Road? 20 steps. And our mind will say, you've got to walk such a long distance from Kerford Road to the temple, do you know? You see how the mind works? It makes you incapacitated. It will make you incapacitated and depend on material forces. That is the problem of material. Therefore, Prabhupada says, in Kali Yuga, we create artificial necessities. Until the doctor says, you have to walk, sir, otherwise your sugar levels will increase. Then we will, you know, with sad heart, we will say, doctor has said, Prabhuji, now I am walking all the way from my home, Prabhuji. What to do? Old age and disease has come about. And they will be cursing that also now. But why did you drive the car before? You should have walked before as well. <laughs> you know? Oh, but no times, Prabhuji. You know, I'm working, busy, busy life. You see? So we've created an artificial society, an artificial need, an artificial necessity, and we, we barge about it to say, now if I don't have that, I will die. Why? Because we don't have Rakshasiti Vishwasaha. We don't have that faith on Krishna that He will take care. He will, He is the one who is maintaining. But we think we are maintaining ourselves. We think if I take my insurance, if I do all these calculations, that if I earn ten thousand dollars, how thousand for here, thousand for here, thousand for here, thousand for the rent, thousand for the mortgage, then I can really lead a very successful devotional life. Kuch nahi hoga. Tomorrow something changes, there is, there is drought for 10 years, finish, that money will go. Tomorrow the dollar will go bankrupt, that whole dollar that you have, the number in the bank account, the zeros that, all we have practiced is adding zeros to the numbers, that's all. 10,000, for 100,000 dollars. We have worried zeros only. There is no one. As long as there is no one, that zero can go bankrupt any time. Why? Because we don't have faith on Krishna. Once we gain that faith, then automatically all of this falls in place. So, uh, Prabhupada ends the purport by saying, by factually, such a materialistic display of spiritual advancement does not help one at all. It will not prevent from one, it will not prevent one from missing the goal of life. So therefore, we have to spiritually advance and avoid investing our human form of life in material advancement. Because the more materially we advance, the more we are engaging our spiritual energy into something that will be destroyed eventually. At the end of life, it will be destroyed. So this is the crux of this verse. I will stop here. Thank you very much for eagerly helping me to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. Is there any questions or comments? Yes, Prabhuji. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Hanuman Prabhu, thank you very much for your wonderful class. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Are you saying that ritualistic ceremonies are not necessary at all, even in a devotee's life? Are there any exceptions, what I'm asking is this question. Um, Ritualistic sermon, ceremonies. The question is, do we need ritualistic ceremonies at all? For example, um, let's talk with an example of... Uh, any example you want to quote, Prabhuji? Uh, you can. Okay. Let's talk about a fire sacrifice, because in the previous verses we spoke of a fire sacrifice. Ritualistic ceremonies are mentioned in the Shastras. If you reject them, that means you are rejecting the Shastras. Is it not? Yes. So how do we understand it? Rejection of ritualistic ceremonies is not suggested, but the wrong procedure of doing that is suggested. First thing. Second thing, if we do fire sacrifice, which is suggested for a grihastha, a grihastha has to, done, has to do Agnishthoma Yagna every day. Actually, it is to be done every day. Without doing Agnishthoma, you can't go out. See, the idea of Agnishthoma Yagna or the fire sacrifice is, the Lord is worshipped as three ways. The Lord is always worshipped in our scriptures in three forms. What are they? One is the deity form, one is the form of a fire, and another form is to serve the brahmanas. The Lord is worshipped through a brahmana, by serving a brahmana, 
by serving the fire, he comes as fire and takes the ahuti because the deity will not eat your offerings. But the, when the Lord comes as fire, he will eat your offerings. You keep offering puris to the fire, the Lord in the fire form, he will eat. You keep hundred puris, he will eat it all away. So therefore, in that sense, you have to offer, you have to worship the Lord in three forms. So what is what Prabhupada and what our Acharya say is people don't have the time to even, you know, read Bhagavatam. Where do they have time to do fire sacrifice these days? Although in certain ancient traditions it is still followed. Prabhupada says he has given us a higher ceremony, which is the Japa Yagna. So one can in, get involved in the Japa Yagna and therefore that is even better than doing the ritualistic ceremony. So there is a comparative rejection but not rejecting what the scriptures are saying. Sometimes people criticize that ISKCON is rejecting the scriptures. It is not. It is just a comparative rejection we are doing. But if somebody is doing the ritualistic ceremony which is the fire sacrifice, the scriptures say that the only purpose of doing that fire sacrifice is to please Vishnu or Krishna. It is not to please anyone else. When we say Om Agnaye Idam Namama, Agnaye Swaha, Agnaye Idam Namama, when we say Agni, that Agni is not the, the deity Agni, it is not the fire Agni, but it is, it is Agni Narayana, the, antara, the Antaratma of Agni, Agni is called Anta. So we worship the fire, we worship the deity, the presiding deity of fire Agni, and we worship the presiding deity who sits inside that Agni Devata who is Agni Narayana. So that is the whole purpose of a fire sacrifice. If we understand it like that, then all ritualistic ceremony is actually a worship of the Lord. It is not, nothing different from bhakti. So in that way, if somebody is doing, then it is justified. Otherwise, otherwise we, do a, we do a fire sacrifice in, uh, in the initiation ceremony. Why do we have to do that otherwise? If holy name, if holy name is itself is enough, isn't not? So that is the reason we do. And it is written in the Hari Bhakti Vilasam. But otherwise, we don't have to spend too much fancy... Uh, Yagnas and things like that, which generally Karma Kandiya Brahmanas think. Karma Kanda means it is a section of the Vedas which is grossly misinterpreted. The Vedas don't talk of a Karma Kanda. It's a word which is given, which is ritualistic ceremony devoid of Krishna. That is Karma Kanda. The same ritualistic ceremony with Krishna becomes worship of the Lord. So, in that sense, it's allowed, Prabhuji. This is my understanding. Yeah, you're right. Initiation, like Prabhupada, he always put fire. Yes. And then only he did the initiation. And that fire is, who Krishna has come as fire. Yeah. And he is witnessing in the form of a fire. We have deity and Krishna work, and the spiritual master, all three observing the vows. So therefore it is important. So Krishna can come in any form and here he has come as a form of fire. Similarly, offering flowers also is very important. Yes. Once Prabhupada, there was no flower. I think it was in <coughs> Netherlands. In the, yeah. He was doing initiation. And he was very angry <laughs> that why there are no flowers. Yes. So one devotee said, please chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rodi. Anyone else? Prabhupada kept quiet. <laughs> Thank you. Abhay has a question. Can you go get the mic? Thank you very much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Thank Krishna. you for the nice class. I've got a question like, um, about the matter part, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, yes, you said just now that um, Lord Krishna he appears as fire, like mm. to take our offerings. Mm. But isn't fire matter also? It is. It is. <coughs> I said there's a difference between Krishna and matter. But when we see Krishna as fire, isn't fire matter? When we see fire as Krishna, isn't isn't fire as matter? Riteratam yat pratiyeta na pratiyeta chatmani. Everything comes from Krishna, right? Aham sarvasya prabhavaha matah sarvam pravartate. Iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava samanvitaha. Fire is matter, correct? But when you see the same fire as a manifestation of energy of Krishna, then you are seeing that fire in relationship to Krishna. You getting the point? So you are not seeing matter alone, but you are seeing matter and its sambandha with the spirit, which is Krishna. Then, then your seeing becomes spiritualized. You are not only seeing fire, but you are seeing fire in relationship to Krishna. You getting my point? So when you see the body, someone's body, you're, when you see just the body, it is matter. When you see the body and the jiva inside, then it becomes spiritual because you are somebody. You, say, you, you go and slap someone. And tell Prabhuji, you are not the body. I'm only slapping your body. I'm not slapping you. <laughs> Can you say that? 
Is it not? Now then you have to see them in unison. You should say, okay, no, you possess the body at the moment. So therefore, if I slap the body, I, it means I'm slapping you. So therefore, you are seeing the body in relation to the spirit. That is the vision we need to develop. But if someone sees just the body, that is what is called material progress or nations. Make sense? So yes, Krishna is spirit, fire is matter, but we see that matter in relation to Krishna. So basically like all the, um, the things we use for paraphernalia, if you just look at the paraphernalia and not relating it to Krishna, it's just basically nothing. Yes. If it's not related to Krishna, then it is matter. For example, you have a copper pot. Somebody might use the same brass pot to put liquor in it and drink. But because he's seeing it a brass pot. But for you, it is a pot which can uh, be used for the worship of the Lord. So then it is not no more a brass pot, but it is a pot which can be used in the service of Krishna. So that, will, so that will help in spiritual advancement, but like without the thing, it will go material. material. Yeah. And the reason is, the day I start connecting matter to Krishna, then my seeing becomes spiritualized, because it's for my own consciousness. Then I, I see nothing but spirit, Vasudevam Sarvamiti, because inside, inside this wood, what do you see? What is wood made of? Huh? Tree. Okay, what is wood made of? Inside the tree, what is it? What is all matter made of? Yes, who said Earth, that? Earth, water, fire. Atoms, is it not? Inside an atom, what do you have find? A proton, an electron and a neutron. So Krishna says, Ano Raniyan Mahato Mahiyan. So he can go for a long walk inside an atom. So the atoms are actualized because of Krishna. So therefore, matter also exists because of Krishna. Matter comes from life. Fire exists because there is spirit. Because there is a spirit called deity of fire, which is Agni, therefore fire exists. So therefore, if you see everything in relation to spirit, then your vision becomes spiritualized, then you become ready to see Krishna face to face. Then your mind, your matter, your eyes, everything is getting spiritualized. Then you are ready to see the spirit. Make sense? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the nice class. Prabhu, you mentioned how it is very difficult to pray to the most richest person and the most poverty stricken person because the whole problem lies in the hunt of material desires. Um, but we, the being satisfied with whatever we have is the main solution. Yes. But Prabhu, nowadays in schools we hear that we should be more competitive and do more and more to just sustain. Hmm. And Maharaj also mentioned yesterday that in this world nowadays we cannot live simply because everything hmm. has gone ten times the rates have gone higher. Yes. Um, so Prabhu, even everyone, everywhere we're being told that do more, be competitive, do more and more. Here we read about being satisfied, so it can be very confusing sometimes. No. Um, <clears throat> these two instructions are not contrary. You are seeing them as contrary. Being competitive and being self-satisfied are not contrary. Being self-satisfied does not mean you should not be competitive. You be competitive, but be satisfied what comes your way. Ma phaleshu kadachanaha, ma karmahetur bhuhu, ma te sangostva akarmani. Krishna says, karmanyeva adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachanaha. Do your duty. If you have to be competitive, you have to be competitive. Welcome to Kali Yuga. Who asked you to come? You came because of your karma. You all have come because of our karma. So bhukto. Competition bhukto. Kaise bhukatna hai? Not complaining. Okay, Krishna, you wanted me to come and I have come because of my karma. Krishna at all time, place and circumstances, I am happy to burn my karma, but I always want to remember you, Krishna. Please don't leave my hand. Hold my hand at all time, place and circumstances. I will fight this battle of competition to whatever degree I can, but at all time, place and circumstances, I want to always think of you, Krishna. I always want to invest iti mati rupa kalpita. Bhishma Dev says, let me invest my mind, my thinking, feeling and willing in you, Krishna. Using this, then you do your competition. Do you think Arjuna did not have competition when he was in the Kurukshetra war, when Krishna was around? He says, I want to be self-satisfied. I'll go and chant in the forest. Krishna says, pick up the bow and fight, man. Yeah? He was fighting Bhishma Dev, Dronacharya, Kripa, all Maharatis, Athiratis. Still, he had competition there. So he had to face the competition. So a devotee is a soldier at the same time, he doesn't complain. But he sees everything, Ma manusmara yudhyacha. He's always a winner. But he doesn't lament about things. If he loses, he doesn't lament. Krishna, it is your will. Be always happy at any time, place and circumstances. Don't, don't compete for the sake of competition. Compete because Krishna wants you to compete. But compete on the mode of goodness. 
don't compete as a jealous envious materialist that's the point because uh, what's the difference between a devotee competitor and a material competition a material competitor is full of envy full of jealousy we don't compete we put our efforts and if i win it's good and i can share that happiness with someone if i don't win that is also fine he he got what his karma has to give him i got what my karma has to give it's easier said than done i'm just talking here philosophy but it's easy, difficult to practice in real life but we have to take the mercy of guru and gauranga for this and then slowly we'll be able to traverse through this darkness of material existence this is a sad story of material life very nice questions actually your questions are helping me to contemplate deeper anything else does it answer you yeah thank you prabhu okay. Yes, Rosie. We'll take this last point and stop here. Ekadashi, it's fasting, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you said always remember Krishna. Yes, Rosie. Can you give us some hints other than chanting? How to remember all the time, twenty-four hours, please? <laughs> um, one way, um, you know better, Prabhuji, but you're asking this only for my understanding. One way the acharyas say is, they, you have five senses. fill your five senses with krishna um, have something that you can touch which is krishna see something that which is krishna maybe photos of krishna deities of krishna some people also stick maha mantras everywhere hare krishna maha mantra everywhere so you are seeing the mantra also you are chanting the mantra you are seeing the mantra S- put something that you can smell like an incense stick or paraphernalia of krishna or flower of krishna let's say you take the flower home and keep the flower for that day and take another flower and keep smelling so you are you are when you see the flower you remember of temple you remember of radha vallabha so constant remembrance is always nice so in some form of the other keep remembering when you are meeting someone oh this is a devotee oh there is parmatma inside this person so when we think like that then we are always connected with krishna not a single point he is separate from krishna krishna tells my devotees are never separate from me um, so that's what the devotees see the devotees see krishna at all time place and circumstances in everyone it's very difficult <laughs> it's very difficult to see krishna in your boss <laughs> especially when he's very mean to you <laughs> <laughs> but we have to we have to break, we have to come to that level and that is that is the that is the benchmark um uh, but if someone is at, at that benchmark then for him there is no matter there is no material world existing for him at all he's already transcended this realm of matter uh, and victory will be his at any time place and circumstance like haridas thakur when he was whipped in the 21 market play he didn't complain he didn't complain and somebody asked him um maharaj baba ji you you are such a holy name chanter and why you are punished you cannot have so much karma left that you have been punished so many times and your flesh is all ble- you're bleeding and he says no 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 i made a big sin what is that when the kazi was criticizing the holy name i was standing there and bearing the insult of the holy name without speaking a word so i have been punished rightly he says so he is still seeing his mistake in that 21 market places of whipping so this is the cadre of devotees we have so there is something to learn from that and just by his demeanor the the kazi was converted the people who ch- uh, whipped him got converted or uh, became you know devotees uh, but it, it is all very theoretical but uh, it can because the devotees have demonstrated it it can be put in practice so it is just a gradual uh, step for us just think of krishna yes thank you prabhuji we'll stop here grantarar shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shrila prabhupad ki jai ananta koti vaishnava vrind ki jai nitai gaur premanande hari hari bol